This is Stephen Welsh, president of the International Chiropractors Association with a daily update for Thursday, June 25th. Well, today we're gonna to continue our journey, that journey in search of the truth. And as we continue to suggest that it may be time to move past the 17th century mechanistic paradigm and to begin to make adjustments in our belief systems. Today, we're gonna to get a little technical and we're gonna delve a little bit into quantum physics. Now you probably heard the famous Einstein quote, God does not play dice with the universe. Well, it was his response to the implications of quantum physics, to the quantum entanglement phenomena first theorized by Erwin Schrodinger in 1935. You see, the quantum entanglement is a quantum mechanical phenomena in which the quantum states of two or more objects have to be described with reference to each other, even though the individual objects may be spatially separated. Well, anyway, Einstein refused to accept the principle of non-locality, insisting that information could not travel faster than the speed of light, and that the idea of spooky action at a distance could not be real. He insisted there must be hidden variables, and the new quantum theories must be incomplete. Well, Einstein was proven wrong in 1982 with an experiment conducted by Elaine Aspect that solved the 1935 EPR paradox. Let me explain. Subatomic particles are entangled in pairs, one with a positive spin, the other with a negative spin. Now, I want you to imagine separating a pair of photons and sending them traveling in opposite directions at the speed of light, and then forcing one particle to change its spin while observing what happens to the other particle. Well, at the instant that one changes, so does the other, even though they're traveling at two times the speed of light away from each other. Well, that's in essence what the 1982 experiment did. So what is the takeaway? Well, the takeaway is there are phenomena that cannot be explained by Newtonian physics that have actually been proven to be true. So now let's take a look at the work that was done at Princeton University during a time period where they had the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Lab that was established by the Dean of Engineering in 1979. And they engaged in a broad range of experiments on consciousness related physical anomalies. Now some of the work explored subjective issues such as the responsiveness of the effects to conscious and unconscious intention and to individual and collective residents and the importance of intrinsic uncertainty as a source of anomalies. Now for over a quarter of a century, these scientists conducted experiments designed to develop alternative scientific paradigms that would allow consciousness and its subjective information processing capacities to play a proactive role in the establishment of objective reality. Now the work is summarized in a paper entitled The Pair Proposition. Now when I read those studies 20 years ago, I looked at them through the lens of a chiropractor. And clearly, they're actually studying what D.D. Palmer referred to as universal intelligence. Now, of course, the program had a strained relationship with the university due to the controversial nature of the subject matter. And for them, it was an embarrassment to those whose belief systems were firmly rooted in the 17th century Newtonian paradigm. Now, these inquiring scientists in this new lab proposed a model that explored the possibility that reality is constituted only in the interaction of consciousness with its environment. They used the concepts and formalisms of quantum mechanics to represent the characteristics of consciousness interacting with its environment. Their attempts to publish their basic research, however, were met with categorical rejection, many times without any formal reviews, and usually on flimsy grounds. Needless to say, critics, critics suggested that it lacked scientific rigor and characterized their work as pseudoscience. Sound familiar? 
So what are the takeaways? Well, one, reality is not what we think it is. Although the early pioneers understood that there were philosophical implications to the newly discovered science, these questions have generally been met with, shut up and calculate. And our world, number two, our world is not just a physical world as envisioned by Newton. We are not just physical machines to be manipulated as with drugs and surgery, but rather conscious beings whose thoughts and beliefs create the world we live in. And three, Didi Palmer was a genius well ahead of his time. He postulated concepts and theories that challenged the healthcare paradigm, a paradigm that continues to this day. And we do need to continue to challenge it. It is time for a new paradigm. Well, that's my update for today. Please check out the ICA COVID resource page where you find a copy of that paper on the pair proposition. And tomorrow, our VP, Dr. Selena Sigafus jackson will be back with another Friday inspirational message. And by the way, Dr. Selena's message from last week about the challenges of female chiropractors in a male-dominated profession, it's back up. It is an important conversation that does need to be had. Meanwhile, reach out and connect with the ICA. We are here for you to help you help your patients because they still need that reassurance that there is no need for mass panic. And don't forget, you are truly their beacon of hope. And we will get through these challenging times and we'll do it by working together. Thank you.